Good morning, everybody. We're so excited to have you here today. I would love to invite you all to stand with us as we worship this morning.
I hope you're excited to be here, because we're excited to be here. Are you excited to be here today? Yeah, yeah, it's good to be together, to be able to worship the Lord. My name is Becca, and on behalf of the whole team, we just wanted to welcome you. And I hope you know that God has brought you here because he wants to speak to you, and he wants to comfort you, and he wants to meet you where you're at. And as we continue to sing and as we continue to worship, I just invite you to engage with the Lord. Engage with him today. There's a beautiful verse that comes out of the book of James. It's a book in the New Testament. And at the end of James, it says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And I love this because it's not talking about a spatial relationship with God, a spatial drawing near. It's a relational drawing near. And when we sing and we turn our minds to him and we, and we sing words to him and we praise him and our thoughts are on him, we are engaging, we are drawing near to God. And God is right there. And we begin to encounter his presence because he is as close as the very breath that we breathe. And so this next song, I just invite you to engage in worship and draw near to God this morning. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, yes, in Jesus. Jesus, the name above.
us just sing out these words today. Just sing them right out to the Lord. Because you were worthy of it all. You were worthy of it all. From you are all things. To you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy, God. You sound amazing today, whether it's the sunshine, whether it's the maybe the little bit more sleep than the 9 a.m. or the coffee kicking in. Hey, you guys sound amazing, especially this section. I was standing over there, and whoever has an incredible voice, I think it's a couple people over there, that was a real benefit to me and real gave me some inspiration coming up here. But hey, I want to say good morning to everyone here. If I have not had the pleasure of meeting you, let me introduce myself. My name is Andrew Kim, and I'm part of the team here at Kensington, and I want to say a huge welcome to everyone here in the room, to everyone who is joining via stream. So incredibly grateful for you and grateful that we can be connected in this way. And so today, what we want to do is right now at this moment, we want to continue in our service by receiving our offering for today. So ushers, I want to invite you to come forward to receive that. And there are a number of ways, if you would like to financially partner with Kensington, a number of ways that we can do so. And our offering bags are going to be coming around, and that is one way. But at the same time, there are a lot of electronic ways that we can give as well. And you see them on the side screens, all the ways that we can do that. But something that's different about this image that we see on the side screens this week is the information down at the bottom. And that's just to provide us as a community with a quick budget update as to where we are. And we promised last year that we would do this about quarterly, just so that we all know where exactly we are. And so just to draw your attention to those numbers, just like any family, just like any other organization, we have a budget as well. And our fiscal year starts on July 1 and goes all the way to June 30th. And our budget, just as a campus, not as Kensington, but just as a campus, is two, a little bit more than $2.3 million. And that allows us to do so many of the things that we absolutely love about this campus and about Kensington. It allows us to invest and teach our, the next generation, our children, our students, about who Jesus is. It allows us to move out and to impact the lives of people, not just in our region, in our nation, but truly in our world. And thus far, this year, in this fiscal year, our giving has been a little bit more than $2 million, which is absolutely extraordinary. And so I, first of all, I just want to say thank you to you all. Thank you for your generosity. And especially in the past couple of years with inflation happening and everything that has been going on and with a lot of us having to tighten our belts, I want to say thank you for that because that is an incredible, incredible level of generosity. But at the same time, something else that you see on the bottom right-hand corner is that in regards to where we are in terms of our budget, we are 14% behind. 
And that's not to make anybody anxious. And just to let you know, we are not going to close our doors next week. Nobody's going to shut off our power, and we're not going to be in the dark in another hour. That is not going to happen. But at the same time, there is a reality to that number. And so just like any family, if we are overspending and we are not bringing in as much money, one of the things is, is that there needs to potentially be in the future realignment and the tightening of our belts, and we may have to do that. But at the same time, as we look at those numbers, if we feel compelled to think about, to consider, and most importantly, to pray about stepping into this, we'd love for our youth and us to be able to do that. And so if you have any questions about this, please come and speak to me afterwards. If you want to know more about the budget, we are an open book, so I'd love to have a conversation with you. So thank you so much for taking the time to listen to that. But something else that I want to mention that is happening at Kensington, a couple of other things, is that this coming Saturday is an incredible event for our middle schoolers. And so if you know a middle schooler, if you are a middle schooler here in the room or watching on stream, we have takeover happening. And for all of our middle, this is hundreds of middle schoolers coming together, and they're going to be first over at our Orient campus for a time of singing and also a powerful teaching uh, centered around Jesus, and then they are going to be taking a trip over to Kalahari where they are going to have the entire facility to themselves. And so we have booked out Kalahari for Saturday, actually Sunday morning, if you can believe that. And so you have like hundreds of middle schools running, running around Kalahari at like 3 a.m., and it is a blast. And I went last year, and I had a lot of fun when I wasn't sleeping, but the middle schoolers definitely had a lot of fun. But this is the thing, right? This is the reason why we do this. It is fun, yes. And we want a bunch of middle schoolers to come. But this is the reason why we do this. Because for so many of these middle schoolers, they invite a ton of their friends. And for a lot of these friends, it, it may be, for some of them, it may be the first time stepping into an environment like this. And for others of them, it may be the first time in a long time that they have in, stepped into an environment like this. And they are introduced to Jesus, many of them. And it's their first step in their movement towards Jesus. And so it is an amazing, amazing night. We want them to laugh and we want them to have tons of fun. But most importantly, we want every single one of them to take a step and know more deeply and more intimately who this Jesus is. And so if you have a middle schooler, if you know of a middle schooler, it is not too late to register. Just go to kensingtonchurch.org forward slash takeover. In addition to that, this coming Wednesday, we have a team that is going to be going to Brazil. Because we have a global partner in Brazil who is doing incredible, incredible things. And I have the privilege of being on that team. But I wanted to bring up our fearless leader, Heather Sellerin, because she is the one who's going to be leading this team. And so she had, knows all the things that are happening in Brazil. She's on staff here at Kensington. So can we give her a huge hand? Hey, thanks for being here, Heather. And so... As our fearless leader, I'd love for you to give us a little bit of an understanding as to what is happening in Brazil with Pastor Ricardo and also how we can pray as well. Good morning, everybody. So I am honored to be on a team of six people with uh, Mr. Andrew here and uh, Steve Andrews. We were invited to visit our partner in Brazil. Uh, Pastor Ricardo has been planting churches for over 20 years, and this, weekend, this next weekend will be a celebration of that. So there are over 80 churches that have been planted, and he's inviting those pastors in for a conference, and they have asked um, some of our team members to speak at that conference. We are so excited to go to share with them some of what we know about planting churches here, but also, more importantly, to learn from them. They have done a fantastic job, especially post-COVID, kind of changing how they've approached church planting, and we're so excited to learn more about that and just kind of you know learn from them about their community, what they're doing, and how they're reacting to some of the changes going on. And so we do have the privilege of going. And if you can imagine this, for Pastor Ricardo, he's been doing this for 20 years. And the number of people who have been impacted, we're not probably even talking about thousands. We're talking about tens of thousands of people who have been impacted, probably not just even in Brazil, but all around the world. And so we want to invite all of us to be able to pray this week for Pastor Ricardo and the weeks to come because God is doing some amazing, amazing things. And so we want to take a moment to do exactly that. So would you join us in prayer? Jesus, thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you for what is happening in Brazil. And really, it is a movement that is happening, Lord, that is focused upon you. And thank you for Pastor Ricardo, his team, his community, and just all the things, Lord, that you have been able to do, not only in them, but through them as well. And powerful things that have resulted in people's lives as a result of it, Lord, of people coming to know you, but at the same time, families, Lord, being brought together 
Lord, the poor being elevated, Lord, and coming alongside of people who are in need and marginalized and ostracized. Thank you, Lord, for the heart of Pastor Ricardo and their beautiful, beautiful community, Lord. And so as we go, as Heather mentioned, Lord, we just pray that you would give us a spirit of humility, that we would go truly as learners, God, because we have a lot to learn from them, Lord. And the little that we do have to offer and what we do have to offer, Lord, that we would go in open-handed and have eyes to see and ears to hear how your Holy Spirit desires to use us in that context. So we thank you, Lord. Thank you for Heather's leadership. Thank you for every single person on this team. And we pray all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Thanks, Heather. And so on that note, whether we're here in the room or watching on stream, I want to invite all of us, let's stand up and let's say hello to the people around us. And so Get Going is the series that we have been in, and we are going to be wrapping up the series today. And before I introduce all of us to the person who is going to be leading us in the thought for today, this series is really focused on sharing the message of Jesus, and not just with our words, but through our actions with the love, Lord, that, he, that, that God has first shown us, that we would then go take it out into the spaces and in the places that we inhabit, and we would share it with the people around us as well. But we may be thinking, how are we supposed to do this? How do I actually do this? And so to answer that question, we have an event that is happening tomorrow, and it's a virtual event. And it's focused on how we can actually move out. And so we'd love every single person to jump in, and we can jump in wherever we are, like I said, wherever we are in the world, because it's a virtual event. And the information is right there. We can go to that website, or we can scan the QR code. And tomorrow night, we're going to be hearing stories of people who have done exactly that, who have not just held on to their faith, but ask God, what am I supposed to do with what you have given me? And these, these are incredible stories that we can learn from, but also at the same time, it's going to be very practical in where we are and with the skills that we have, how can we share the message of Jesus with the people around us? We'd love for all of us to jump in and to be a part of that tomorrow. But today, we are in the final week of this series, as I mentioned, and we have none other than a great friend of Kensington, and his name is Leo Robinson, and he's going to be leading us today. So, Leo, I'd love for you to come up. Can we give this guy a huge hand? And Leo, just if you don't know him, he actually, you were here a couple years ago and you led us at a midweek service. But Leo is, and Leo is, the lead pastor of a church, amazing community in Flint called Good Church, a community that is doing amazing, amazing things. And so Leo's going to fill us more in on that. But before you get into it, I'd love to pray for you. Would you bow your heads with us? Jesus, thank you for this man. Thank you for his leadership. Thank you for his heart. God, thank you for the message that you've given him today. So, Lord, we pray that this message, God, he would speak boldly, Lord, and that for us as we listen, Lord, that you would give us ears to hear and eyes to see, Lord, how your Holy Spirit is leading us and how your Holy Spirit desires to speak to us. And we also pray for Good Church, God, this amazing community in Flint. Thank you for the passion of their leaders. Thank you, the desire of that community to want to not just stay within their four walls, but to move out into their neighborhood. And thank you for the ways that they've ha they have as well. And so, Lord, as they have just really a mission, a God-given mission to reach their neighbors, Lord, we pray that you would continue to give them everything that they need to be able to do so. And Leo, the wisdom and the courage and the humility to be able to lead this community and continue to do so. Thank you for this man and his family. And we pray all these things in your name. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. All right. Let me just tell you how this is going to work, okay? Listen. You guys are the last service of this day, and we don't have any time restrictions. <laughs> so let's get this. We've locked the doors. Not really, but uh, I will chase you. And um, let's, 
you know, if we want this message to go a lot quicker, just let me give you a little insight. If you participate, this message would be a lot shorter. Some of you have not gone to a black church before. And that's okay. A um, little insight, if you give a amen, some of you have. The pastor wants to end on a good note. And I want to end on a good note. So that means if you say amen, that means... That means... <laughs> That means I want to end, and we're going to end on a good note. But it means if you're quiet, that means you're not getting the message, and I'm going to just keep on going. That's why some of these churches last for three and four hours, because people just sitting there quiet. People fell asleep. But no, let me, I'm just serious. All right, let's go on. I'm Leo. I'm from uh, north side of Flint. We planted a church there about three years ago, going on four years, of, uh, going on four years now. Um, uh, October uh, will be our fourth year. Uh, I'm married uh, for about 20 years. <laughs> nice. I'm glad y'all cl clap for that. Um, we have five kids. I guess that's easy for some of y'all. Some of y'all didn't even clap. I'm like, yeah, we got 10. So what? <laughs> and um, so we've been married for 20 years, got five kids, and uh, we play at a church and on the north side of Flint. And, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm not new to Kensington. You know, I've preached or in multiple camp or multiple campuses in Kensington, and that's pretty sweet. You know, I've even preached here, uh, like you said, uh, Andrew. Uh, I'm his brother from a doctor mother, um, and, and you know, and so I preached over there in the little chapel with the high school students a couple times. That's pretty sweet. I did the little takeover thing uh, for the middle schoolers. They stink, uh, like they feed or something. I did that. Uh, that was pretty sweet. I did the 1829 with the young adults. Uh, and I hear you guys are going to Brazil. I can't wait to get invited to that. Uh, just don't leave me out of that one. Um, and now I'm here with you guys on a Sunday. That's pretty awesome. Uh, I preached over there at Clarkston with Jeremiah and all his steroid muscles. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's my brother, too. Uh, over and over, I preached there, and I'm excited to be a part of this family. I am a part of you. So don't feel embarrassed if I make a joke that's out of character. I'm one of yours, okay? So I apologize. I'm one of you guys. We are kingdom, uh, and I love uh, Kensington. Uh, we are the church. Amen? Uh, amen. Look at y'all, ready to go. Look at that. You know, that coffee is in you. Um, and so listen to this. Um, this message, I believe, uh, why they have me here today. This message is a hard message to preach. And that's why they brought me here today, so that next week they can clean it up. <laughs> you know, I'm be honest, we have, I have a gentleman at my church right now preaching a very difficult message. And so, because that's what we as pastors do. When we got someone preaching a difficult message, we have someone, a guest preacher come in and do it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, this message is a difficult one. This is the last message of a series called Get Going. And so I'm here to do this message, and it's difficult. It's going to challenge you to, to do something that is going to activate your faith. I don't know about you, um, but anybody in here like being comfortable, raise your hand. If you like being comfortable. I like being comfortable. And, um, and so this mes message today is going to challenge you to be uncomfortable. And you may be mad at me today, and that's okay. I'm from Flint. <laughs> I'm from Flint. I know how, I, no, 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 don't clap your hands. <laughs> what that simply means is I've already spotted out the exit doors. 
And so if you are mad with me, I already looked at the exit doors and I already seen my exit and I know how to run to my car. I already know that. And so you're going to be mad, you're going to have some attitudes, and I'm going to stir up, my prayer is your faith is going to be stirred up today. Because it's challenged me. And it's all, and to be honest, it's almost made me feel like a hypocrite preaching this message. And so if you've come in here today just to check off your Sunday routine, I got a surprise for you. All the 13 churches you've passed today, you probably should have stopped at one of them. <laughs> today, you're going to be challenged. And it's going to be very hard for you just to check off your routine today. Um, with that being said, some of you, if you clapped with that message or the question of like the thought of like having kids, uh, and, you know, cheered me on, you may have had a kid in your life. And maybe you have had a kid not do something you wanted them to do. If you feel that way, say amen. 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 You've told that kid to do something and they just didn't do it. And they may have challenged you. I don't know about you, but I come from that era. You do it without asking this question of what? Why? You just do it because I told you so. That's made some people in here mad already. <laughs> they feel they have the idea just to just challenge anything. Just you tell me to do something, I should be able to ask why. I have five kids and they believe the moment I tell them and my wife tells them to do something, they should be automatically be able to say why. My kids just had something happen to them, and some of it, it happened to you. Some young people are sitting here right now. It happened to you just a few days ago, AT&T. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it happened to the cell phone service. The cell phone service just died. And my daughter, who is 15 years old, I have a three-year-old, a six-year-old, a 13-year-old, and a 15-year-old, and we adopted a son who's 21 now from Russia. That's right. We did a reverse style. <laughs> Some of y'all will get that later. Anyway, <laughs> that's a bad joke. I'm sorry. Anyways, um, my 15-year-old lost service, and she just thought Jesus was coming. <laughs> she lost service, and she just could not understand what was happening. Her phone just was like, Dad, what is going on? What is SOS? <laughs> oh, my God. I can't call, I can't text. My heart is coming out of my chest. For like 12 hours, you should have saw the sweat that was coming out of my daughter's face. She couldn't do anything, like she just was, uh, uh. she just was incapacitated, like you would have thought, like, the, like seriously, the world was ending. And I'm a millennial, like, I've, like I was born when like you still had the rotating phone thing. Like, I was born when the internet still had to dial itself. Like, I knew this stuff still. I still was around when typewriters had to. So I'm okay with that. I'm okay, but my daughter has nothing known, nothing but wireless. Like, she takes selfies with a, a telephone, like, that's, like, in like New York. She takes selfies with, like, this is a real thing, Dad. And it's like, so for those 12 or whatever hours, she just forgot. She just didn't know what to do. And so in that moment, she didn't, the phone, she was trying to tell it what to do, and it could not do what she was telling it to do. This has something to do with my message. Some of y'all think I'm just ranting. No. You're looking at me, but it has something to do with Jesus, I promise you. 
He, he's coming back. Thank you. That's a good one, but not now. <laughs> now, but this is it. Then now my three-year-old. Here it is. We have two dogs. I'm from Flint, so I like to think that they're tough. We call them pit doodles. <laughs> but really, they're standard poodles. One of them is named Samson because I'm a pastor. I got to name it something Christian. He's a big standard poodle, and, and um, he's lazy. He doesn't do anything. Just I like him because he doesn't do anything. Just flops around the house. He doesn't bark, and I hope this is not being broadcast everywhere because people will break in. He'll just look at him and say, what's up, and go back to sleep. <laughs> but the other one, this new one we got, we couldn't name her Delilah because it doesn't end well for Samson. <laughs> we name her Lola. And um, since we're a biracial family, Samson is kind of brown. She's black. You know what I'm saying? You'll get that later. <laughs> Lola is black. She's all black. And I mean, she's dark black, beautiful dark black, but she's a year and a half. Samson is almost 10. Lola is black and a year and a half. And my three-year-old is three-year-old. She does not listen. Daughter does not listen. Her name is Noel. She doesn't listen. She always asks why. You tell her to do something, she is like, why? 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 And guess what Lola doesn't do? Listen. So Noel tries to tell Lola something, and Noel will go to Lola and say, Lola, sit. And Lola just looks at her, and then runs away. She says, Lola, do this, and Lola, do that. And Lola does not listen. And then Noel will come up to me and say, Dad, Lola does not listen. And I look right at Noel and says, she does what you do. She does not listen. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, all of that intro just for me to talk about this Jesus. Because that's where we find ourselves today. Today, I'm about to show you a deep question, and, or a deep, yeah, it's a question and, uh, of why we're here, and why are you sitting here today, and why don't we listen? And this scripture that we're about to put up on the verse, I'm going to read right through it. It's a challenge that Jesus is about to put to his disciples who are walking with him. We are just like Lola and Noel, and, and, and most of us, including me, I'm not mightier and holier than any of us in, in this room. We don't listen into this very simple instruction. We like to be comfortable, and here it is right here, Luke it's the hardest message I've ever preached in my life. It's the reason why we are in this world today. Luke chapter 19, 11 through 27. Here we are right here. Jesus is walking with his disciples, about to be crucified. And here he is. Let's go to this. Man, I tried getting through this earlier without being emotional, but I'll try again. As they heard these things, he proceeded to tell a parable because he was near to Jerusalem. And because they supposed that the kingdom of God was to appear immediately, he said, Therefore, a nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and then return. Calling ten of his servants, he gave them ten minus, which is like three months of wages. He said to them, I need you all to repeat after me, engage in business. Okay, again, see, this is the problem. We don't follow directions in church. <laughs> One more time, repeat after me. Some of y'all look right at me, heard what I said, and still kept your lips closed. <laughs> That's why we're going to be here till 4 o'clock. 
go miss your soccer games and all this other stuff. Here we go, one more time. Repeat after me. Engage in business. All right. This is what Jesus is telling his disciples. Listen to this. Engage in business until I come. It's simple that. It's a simple thing. Some of us think the Bible is so complicated, and it's not. He gave, listen to them. He called them forward, gave them his 10 servants, engage in business until I come. It's very simple. But his citizens hated him. So you got servants and then citizens. This parable has two types of people, citizens and these servants who he's called to him. And he sent a delegation after him saying, we do not want this man to reign over us. When he returned, having received the kingdom, he ordered his servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him that he might know what they had gained by doing what? By doing what? Because they were supposed to do what? Do business. And they were supposed to engage in business. It's very simple, y'all. The first came before him saying, Lord, your mina has made me ten minas more. And he said to him, well done, good servant, because you have been faithful in a very little, you shall have authority over what? Ten cities. Y'all are so good. Y'all ready to go. I see it. And the second, can you imagine this? Because they didn't know what was to happen. They just heard him say, listen, engage in business. Here's one. Take it and engage in business. He didn't promise them anything. He didn't say this is what you're going to do with it. This is, he says, just here you go, boom, engage in business. So they gave him, listen, okay, I'm engaged in business, baby. And here's 10. And now this one receives 10 cities. Can you imagine the second one said, uh-oh, <laughs> I'm next in line. I got, I got at least five. He got ten. I've multiplied mine. I got five. The second came saying, Lord, your minor has made five minors. And he said to him, you are to be over five cities. And look at verse 20. And the another came to him and said, Lord, here is your minor, which I have kept laid away in a handkerchief. Verse 21, I was afraid of you because you are a severe man. You take what you did not deposit and you reap what you did not sow. He said to him, I will condemn you with your own words, you wicked servant. You knew that I was a severe man, taking what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the bank? And am I coming, I, may, I might have collected with, the, with interest. And he said to those who stood, take the minor from him and give it to the one who has 10 minors. And, and 25 says, they said to him, Lord, he has 10. And 26 said, I tell you to everyone who has more, will be given. From those who has not, even that what he has will be taken away. I'm going to pause right there for a minute and take it right now because some of us should be really shaking in our boots. Like this is a big deal for us. Like this right here is what we do every single day. This is what I was doing in moments of my life, I didn't know this. Like this individual was afraid to use the one thing he was given. He was afraid to share what he was given. He was afraid to share it because of the idea of this thing that we have lost in this world, the thing that we have lost, 
Like, we go around painting this picture of Jesus. For some reason, we put it in our house of Jesus, this, like, senior picture of Jesus, who is so pretty and sideways. We put it in the bathroom for most of us, in the kitchens, and we make Jesus so soft. And yes, he's a lamb, but he's also a lion. The same Jesus who says, I don't have a house to sleep in. And if you're going to follow me, you're going to lose everything. You must give up everything to gain everything. Like the, the, the Bible that calls him a lion and a lamb. We think he is this Jesus who is passing out Skittles and chasing rainbows. But this Jesus is saying, listen, I'm giving you one command, and he comes from a generation that you do as he says. And not from this fear-based moment, but as this reverence-based moment. That everything is at stake in this moment. Like, his command means everything. And we are comfortable that what he has given you, you are afraid to use it because of your comparison to the world. Your comparison that I don't know what to do with what he's given me or I need to know why. If you just look at this parable, he didn't train them up and say, listen, I'm going to give you this minor and let me teach you for 10 weeks how to grow interest, how to grow the disciples and keep going and go through a 10-week course on sharing your story. He says, I'm giving you one minor and engage. You have what it takes to be good enough. And not good enough that you're perfect, but trusting what God has already given you from the beginning of his word that was deposited in you when you were introduced to him. The moment you were introduced to Christ and you said, man, Christ is real. Jesus was, here's that deposit. I got you. Now go. I love the title of y'all series, Get Going, but some of y'all like just sitting. And you keep coming back to Kensington and saying, I'll, I'm just going to just wait to find out my why. And you wait for Pastor Andrew to give you a why. And you're waiting for another pastor to give you a why. But they're saying, get going. You have your one, get going. And you're just covering it up, covering up, keeping it covered. And you're comparing it to the singer. You're comparing it to a drummer. You're comparing it to a preacher. You're comparing it to somebody else's talent. And he says, no, I've given it to you. Get going and trust the giver of the gift. Get going. Oh, here it is. Watch this, y'all. Because let me tell you what's at stake. I didn't know this. I didn't know this part right here. And this is the part that hurts me the most. Jesus was going over to Jerusalem, and this is the city that he cried over. Jesus weeps when he's at the tomb of Lazarus, but he also weeps over Jerusalem when he sees the city. There's lost people over the city. There's people that are lost in the city and, and what does he give these individuals in this, in this parable? He gives them cities after just giving them one gift. He says, you have the power to release cities, authority over cities. It's one gift that you have that can free cities. There's lost souls at stake. Listen to this in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7. Listen to this. One of a power, it floored me. It floored me. Watch this. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard 
because of his reverence. I believe some of, him, some of us have lost this idea of God just telling us to go because we don't reverence his word. We don't just do what he's told us to do, and that's to go out from our comfortable seats and just go into this world and use the gifts that he's given us. The thing that we know that we've been covering up. I don't need to bring you on stage and pray for you 1,200 times. You know what you've been covering up. You know what your passions are. You know what you're, like this thing that God has given you that's unique and that's, like you know it. It doesn't have to be this hyper spiritual thing. Let me tell you this. Like God has called me and I, to be a pastor. Look at me. Do I look like a pastor? Don't answer that. Stop laughing. <laughs> it's a, and be honest, it's a cool thing that I get to do with the priest, but it's very difficult when I got to sit at the, at the moment that somebody's taking their last breath. And that's a hard thing. And my wife and I, we've been chosen to do this in a neighborhood that the median income level is $15,000 a household. And there's an average of three people in the house. So that's $5,000 per house, for, per person, excuse me. And so when we got into this neighborhood, I'm like, God, like, this is crazy. Like, $15,000 per household, $5,000 per person. Like, how are we going to have a church in this neighborhood? And I thought that was our minor. Like, this is, okay, the church is this minor, but he's like, no, we need you to start asking questions. Ask the people what their, that's your gift is you talking. So we start going around and building relationships with the people and found out that they don't have access to clean clothes. And we found out that was the minor is this gift of Leo talking all the time. And that's where we get into this moment. And we're building the laundry mat in the lower level of our church. And that laundry mat will be opening up. In late spring, May 17th is where we're opening up our a laundry mat, 17 machines that we bring people around our communities to share the gospel while they're, we're not just washing their feet, but we're actually washing their clothes. You're going to follow this video here of a minor, someone from a Kensington church, a gift, because it's not that complicated. But if you read the rest of this story, it matters because you find out that people actually get slaughtered because this Jesus is telling you your minor means so much more. Because he does not want people to perish. So that when you go into these cities, he wants to invite people into his kingdom. So your minor means something. So the idea of this, right before this video plays, is that your reverence of his command, his rev your reverence of that, so that you don't have regret in the end. And that you're about to see just simple steps of following the command impact cities. Thank you. August of 2020, um, right before school was about to start, I was on my way home, heard on the radio that, you know, a bunch of schools in our area were not reopening. And I just thought immediately, like, this seems like a challenging prospect for a lot of families. So I got home, talked to the wife, and uh, had this idea of giving kids uh, a desk, something that they could use at home. You know, stores were sold out of them or people were overpricing them, so I knew it would be a struggle. So we started, we put it out on Facebook and basically just tried to get a feel for whether or not people needed this or how best to distribute them. Fill everybody in, I guess the intent of all of this is actually to give these away um, to families that 
can't afford to buy a desk right now? Pretty quickly, we got a few responses. A lot of people shared the story and we ended up getting about six requests. After about 10 desks were distributed, we got picked up by a local newspaper. And then the next day after that story ran, I got a call from Fox 2. Earlier this month, Nate Haas, who works in the commercial construction industry, got an idea. If I can give some kids a dedicated workspace, especially families who can't afford a desk otherwise, that would be my mission. So Nate got to work. Within an hour, uh, I had an extra 100 requests. And for the next week, uh, that doubled again. So I was at over 200 requests in, in a single week. I kind of felt like my whole life, God's given me the opportunity to kind of develop my skills with you know, tools or working in workshops or things like that. But I never really knew what that was gonna lead to. This opportunity came up and I just felt like, hey, I have a garage now, I have a shop space now. So we started the process and uh, I, I prayed that I would get some type of help in all of this, uh, especially on the fundraising side. So we published videos, asked for requests, and the money came in um, kind of just as we needed it uh, to fulfill this list. I realized pretty quickly that I wasn't gonna be able to do it alone. And God kept bringing me people that, honestly, that uh, uh, offered their own garages to help facilitate it. And we had people working all over painting, building desktops, building desk legs. And the only thing I did in my garage anymore was just assemble it and distribute. We ended up with, I would say, five or so hardcore volunteers, which was pivotal because we were able to manufacture desks and bring the bring the desks to these kids faster because um, school had already started. We worked through the list as much as we could and we would reach out. Some people would just say, no, I found something else. And the list started to actually dwindle. We got um, so many cancellations that it seemed as though uh, God was taking the finances that we had and aligning it with the list that we needed to fulfill. Towards the end of our effort, um, I realized that we had about two desks left to make and about $10 in the bank account. So I spent about an hour in the garage working on a video to ask for more money, a couple of last donations. And I don't know what it was, but I couldn't get the words right, didn't feel right. And I felt like God was basically saying, you're worried too much. I told you at the beginning of this, I got you. And I think it's time you let me show you again how I got you. So the next day opened up uh, Venmo and I had gotten two donations overnight, one for $30 and one for $50, which was the perfect amount that I needed to get the materials for the last two desks. And I just thanked God. I, could, I just couldn't believe that he had worked that out again on something that I had tried to formulate a request for additional funds. For me in my situation, you know, I was working off of a thought that I think God prompted me on and that, you know, if there's ever an, a chance now where uh, a, an opportunity continues to present itself where that thought turns into, you know, this yellow brick road of a path forward, um, I think that what I've learned now is that, hey, recognize that and feel the comfort that God will provide the entire way. And if there is anybody that's ever wondered, you know, hey, I might have a, a skill in baking or I might have a skill in mowing the lawn, there might be opportunities just right around your community or, or with the person next door that you can use those God-given talents in a very maybe small way that could you know, change your community, which is pretty, pretty cool to think about. Take my moments and my days, 
Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of our love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from Thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a Take my intellect and use every power as you choose. Here am I, Here am I. all of me, all of me. Take my life. Take my life. It's all. Take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is unknown. It shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at your feet this treasure store. Take myself and, and I, I will be ever only all for thee. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. And let it be consecrated, Lord, to me.
A couple things I want to mention before we leave is that what that song was really all about is for us to come to God like this. Because as Leo mentioned, and as the scripture passage that we actually looked at, for every single one of us, we have a minus. We have a talent, we have a skill, we have a passion that God has given us. And the question is, what are we actually going to do with it? And maybe for some of us, we don't know. When we actually look at our lives, maybe we have an incredible financial mind. Maybe for others of us, we have a passion for the next generation. Maybe still for others of us, we know how to build desks, but we don't exactly know where am I supposed to use this skill. And if that is us, as I mentioned earlier, we have something going on tomorrow that can help us with this. And that's the move out event. And so we want to invite us, if that is us, to go and to be a part of this virtual event. And it may not be everything, but, it'll be, but it will be something and a step that God invites us to take really on the journey of using our skill, our talent, our passion, ultimately in the way that he desires. We'd love for all of us to be a part of this. But an example of somebody who has actually done this is a bunch of leaders who are part of a ministry that we have here called K-Friends. And it's a ministry for adults and teens with special needs to connect with one another and most importantly connect with Jesus. And it is their sixth anniversary today. And so that's amazing, isn't it? And so they're actually having a party out in the lobby. And so stop by, say hello, and congratulate them. And so because it really is incredible. And so one last thing before we go is that our prayer team will be down front as well for anyone who would like to receive prayer or somebody to pray with them. But we want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for streaming. And have a great rest of your Sunday, everyone.